as we pause and come together to reflect upon New Year's Eve. I ask that you find a place where you're comfortable to sit, maybe even light a candle to bring God's revealing light into this time and into the past and future years. I ask that you pause and allow the busyness around you and the activity of the past few days to settle. Place yourself in God's unconditional love. Whatever has happened this year, God loves you and will continue to love you. So welcome. Mighty God, we come together at the end of another year with joy, with sadness, with gratitude and thankfulness in our hearts. We come to declare our faithfulness to you. Lord of past, present and future. For the love we have received the care you have always shown and the help you have invariably given. Lord of past, present and future. For the mercy you have displayed, the forgiveness you have offered and the renewal you have brought. Lord of past, present and future. Meet with us now in our time together so that through being here in your presence we may grow closer to you and each other and be equipped to work for your kingdom in the year ahead. Lord of past, present and future. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. After Herod died, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Get up, take the child and his mother and go to the land of Israel. For those who are trying to take the child's, child's life are dead. So he got up, took the child and his mother and went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was reigning in Judea in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. Having been warned in a dream, he withdrew to the district of Galilee and he went and lived in a town called Nazareth. So was fulfilled what was said through the prophets that he would be called a Nazarene. Well, as Christmas comes to an end, we anxiously now await the words Happy New Year. Well, this past year, while well, it's been one of those unfortunate and difficult years, but it's led to many a discussion and ponder over the interesting time that it's been. The tough times, the good times, the sad times, the frustrating times. As a church, it has been difficult to meet fully as we should have wanted to to be amongst those that we've missed sharing in fellowship. The sad losses that have been around us during this pandemic time of those we've known close to us and those that we have heard of. St Ignatius recommends a daily examine of consciousness during this particular time in which we are able to look back and recognise where God has been present during this unusual year. New Year often seems to intrude on the Christmas season, 
the festivities that we may still have been able to have enjoyed. It adds another element and it distracts us from the birth of Christ. Yet as we are still in this Christmas season, we too can just at this moment give space to mark it and to reflect on the year that is past and the year that is to come. What new experiences will we go through? Maybe what new lessons will we learn? It's all fresh and new and that's exciting but also maybe daunting in the light of the circumstances in which we still find ourselves in. But in doing this I believe it helps us to view each year as a season understanding that God is sovereign and has new seasons of experiences and growth to make us more like him, to make us more Christ-like. I can testify there were times we went through seasons of grief and there are also times that we experienced seasons of joy. May we be reminded of our reading that we shared together earlier because once again Joseph has a nighttime angelic visitation giving the all clear that Mary and Joseph can return to Nazareth which according to Luke is their hometown and one they know perhaps pretty well and it is here in this busy town that the family begins to settle and then spends about 30 years in a time of mystery, you could say, until Jesus appears by the River Jordan to be baptised by John, that you can read in Matthew 13. And apart from the temple incident in Luke 2, which gives us one childhood story, We simply know that Mary and Joseph's family grew and Jesus appeared to be a normal child in the time of his growing up that you can also see in Matthew 13. And we begin to get a sense that in all of this there was no hurry, that his mission would start all in good time. So we see that Jesus dwelt in a normal human home, nurtured by loving parents, who knew that their task was to provide the environment in which their son could flourish. Jesus humbled himself to enter this world as a human being. And that humbling included being in a home where he needed to be loved and where he needed to be nurtured, just like the rest of us. For me, I find great comfort in this. And it also helps me to remember that God is in total control, whatever our situations, and that we are constantly being nurtured and growing as his children that he is our parent and that he knows the plans he has for us. Plans of new wisdom, insight and understanding that he wants to impart to us, if we will allow him to. And it also gives us a fresh new outlook of the coming new year and enables us to leave the past where it belongs. Not that we forget the past and all that has gone on, but to learn from it and to move forward into our present future with open hearts and open minds to receive whatever God has for us. This year has been definitely a different year, but we look forward in hope, holding on to the fact that Christ came as a child to save us 
and he will never leave us nor forsake us. And he never has done, whether it be during this difficult time and even in the times ahead, whatever it is we look forward to, whatever is ahead of us, he will be our strength, our guide, our peace and our presence at all times in this coming new year. So thanks be to God that he came to us as a child and we too come humbly to him, holding on to him in the days ahead. Amen. For a moment or two, I invite you and I invite God to be present as you reflect on the past year. Begin by asking the question, when has God been present to me this year? Recognise those times when you have been particularly aware of God with you during the year. Times when you've known his goodness and generosity. Thank God for all he has been doing, for the things you have recognised and those that still go unrecognised. Offer him your thanks and praise for what he has done and who he is. And when you are ready, begin to recognise the points in the past year when it has felt as if God were absent, the times when you have been ignored, or even the times when you have ignored him, the low points in the year. Don't dwell on guilt or fault, but recognise those places and times and invite God into them allowing him to fill them with his love and then to take them and make them his. Remember, God loves us unconditionally. He loves us in our failings as well as our successes. Receive his forgiveness and his love. Offer to God, as a symbol of the coming year, a time when perhaps you can make a note or write down something in your diary, something where God has spoken to you, giving him all of it, to be able to hold it and to hold on to it in guiding you in the coming year. past our hope for years to come our shelter from the stormy blast and our eternal home under the shadow of thy throne still may we dwell secure so 
sufficient is thine arm alone, and our defense is sure. Before the hills in order stood, o'er earth received her frame. From the same. A thousand ages in thy sight are like an evening gone, short as the watch that 